Lopez Fernandez. I'm the curator of freshwater fishes of the Rome. I'm doing research mostly all over South America, but more recently we have been working extensively in the country of Guyana, and in particular in the Upper Mazaruni River Basin, which is an incredibly interesting river perched atop the, the Guyana Shield in a very remote area of, of Guyana, and isolated from the rest of the country by a series of waterfalls. And these waterfalls keep the fishes from being able to move from the lowlands to the uplands. And no one had ever done a full-blown ecological exploration of the upper Mazaruni, so nobody really knew what other fishes might be there. So in 2008, when I just arrived to the Rome, by total serendipity, the opportunity to go to the upper Mazaruni just happened to occur. And of course I jumped at it because I study cichlids and Mazarunia was one of the fishes that I had never seen. And much to our amazement, when we, when we arrived at the Mazarunia and started fishing, what we confirmed is that it wasn't just Mazarunia and those other very few fishes that, that had been described as unique, but essentially we found only 35 species, which for a river the size of the upper Mazaruni is very little in South America. But of those, about 29, are only present in the Mazaruni. They are what we call endemics. So somehow these fishes have become trapped in the evolutionary history of the region and they have become their own thing. And uh, what we're starting to find with studies of DNA is that these fishes might have been isolated in the upper Mazaruni for maybe as much as 20 or 25 million years. Everything we have found so far is incredibly unique and, and, and it's pointing uniformly towards the idea that no other fishes in, in, in South America have a history quite like the ones in the Mazaruni. And they may be actually very important for us to understand the evolutionary history of all of South American fishes in general. So in here what we have is actually the entire collection of cichlids that the ROM has. This is the family of fishes that we do most of our research with right now. And we have them from literally all over South and Central America. Different parts of the collection, we have fishes from Venezuela, we have fishes from Peru, from Mexico, and when we put the information that we collect from all these fishes together, then we can assemble the history of evolution and biogeographic distribution of the entire family, which is, we hope, a way to learn a lot more about the origin of the largest diversity of freshwater fishes on the planet, which is actually concentrated in South and Central America. We've just popped into our alcohol collection. Uh, this is where we have uh, some of our specimens that we've brought back from Guyana. And here I've got uh, Hypsoboa stablesi, which is uh, a beautiful, kind of loses its color in here, but a uh, beautiful green uh, frog that calls and lays eggs in pools of water. This is a species of the genus Pippa which is a frog that is unusual and that it's totally aquatic throughout life. 
the female carries the eggs embedded in the skin of her back. And uh, when, they're, when they hatch, there's no tadpole stage, and they hatch just as tiny little froglets and swim away out of, her, out of the holes in her skin. My name is Ross McCullough, Assistant Curator for Herpetology at the ROM. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. This is my office where we look at uh, specimens from all over the world, but lately we're concentrating on Guyana. It's an English-speaking country on South America with a very close ties to Canada. A lot of Guyanese people living in Canada and a lot of Canadians living in Guyana. We collaborate with Guyanese government agencies. Uh, they're interested in understanding the fauna of their country. They're interested in, in determining uh, important areas of high biodiversity or other ecological interest with the aim of setting up wildlife reserves, uh, nature reserves, uh, perhaps sites for ecotourism because uh, a number of tropical countries, Guyana included, are now realizing that uh, ecotourism is equally uh, lucrative to uh, resource extraction, to destructive resource extraction. We've been concentrating lately on the higher elevations in the western part of the country, the, uh, the famous Tepuis, the flat top mountains. And we're finding that just about every mountain we go to has a fauna with unique components. There are species that occur on one Tepui and nowhere else. So we're finding this uh, in a number of areas. And we were able to compare this with what's research that's been done in Venezuela and the other Tepuis. And we're finding that this continue is very uh, it's, uh, consistent across the Tepui region. This is a, uh, a frog known as Stephania coxi. And it was named for a former uh, ROM employee who actually came along with us on our 2000 expedition to Mount Ayangana. We say that for every month spent in the field, it takes at least a year to examine what, uh, what we've brought back and work on that, work it up. A lot of the specimens are, are completely unknown. We have to try and figure out what they are and what their relationships are to other known species. Here at the Shad Gallery, um, we uh, we'll set up programs like today's and uh, people can see exactly what we found. And, uh, it's always nice to do that, to let uh, people know what we're up to. Ross is the logistic guy. I'm the doer. He says, do it, I do it. So, I'm Amy Lathrop, and I'm the herpetology technician at the ROM. And what I do here is very much like being a librarian, part of it. Part of my job is to uh, take care of the collection, like a librarian would take care of books. The best part of my job is when I get a, a ticket to ride to go to a, on a trip somewhere. And one of the places I've been to is Guyana. Some of the things that really, really amaze me are the reptiles and amphibians. I got goosebumps just thinking about Guyana. I didn't appreciate it until we flew in in this little, uh, small six-seater plane and all you can see around you is just trees and trees and trees. You can't even study for what you're going to see. Sometimes we get there and we don't even know what genus something belongs to. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's stuff right out of when Cope and those guys were doing ex explorations, Linnaeus, you know, when you, you go places and you just don't know what, you don't even know what genus it belongs to. In the field we take uh, DNA samples and a little tissue, uh, bring it back and uh, we'll isolate the DNA. Part of identifying the species is a little fragment of DNA called CO1. We call it a barcode. Every species has a unique barcode of CO1 and I, I apologize, these are all just little letters and numbers, but this right here represents what we think is one single species from various locations in Guyana. We have eight different locales, and if you scroll across here, if it was one species, all of these sequences should be exactly the same. In many cases, you can see some of these individuals are different than each other. This is just like a quick snapshot. It's the cheapest way to get a picture of variation. Uh, then we might do a little bit more DNA work.
uh, different genes that are a little more conservative. And we'd also actually look at, look at the specimens and see if we can see some visual differences. Okay, uh, my name is Burton Lim. I'm an assistant curator at the Royal Ontario Museum and I study mammals, uh, bats in particular. Uh, we'll be heading down to Guyana for about a month. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, bat monitoring uh, project at Ewok Rama Forest in Guyana. We're trying to do uh, like an annual survey of the bats, so we're trying to see if there's any changes to the species diversity or relative abundance. Uh, so we'll be working at five different sites. For me, uh, Guyana is a great place to catch bats just because um, it's one of the few countries in the world that um, the uh, rainforest is still in you know, fairly pristine condition. So you can just literally walk outside your camp and you know, start catching bats. Georgetown, the capital city of me, is like the wild west. And once you get out of that town, uh, you're essentially in the bush on your own. Uh, we've got some rats and bats. We're not doing any rats on this trip. And yeah, normally when I go on a field trip, it's uh, like small mammals. So I'll be doing not only sending you know, uh, nets for bats, but also you know, traps for the rats. And yeah, so on this trade, there's probably a dozen, a dozen different species. It's a big rat trip. <laughs> Which might be what would we see? Well, we got uh, this anteater. This is Tamandua. is is a species that's found in Guyana. Uh, well, there's a giant, giant, giant armadillo there. So th those are found in Guyana. You, you actually hear them before you, you see them. Yeah. It, it sounds like it's a little tank rolling through the forest. Yeah. You, you just hear all this like leaf rustling because it's, it's they're just digging around. So you went to Guyana last year. Right? Yeah. Well, one of the interesting things is that you know most of the camps that we'll be going to um, will be getting there by boat, uh, so it's not really a mammal or a bat related story. But uh, on one of the boat rides to I think our last camp, we actually uh, came across an anaconda, and there's a herpetologist that was on the trip, and of course you know he had to go you know grab this thing and measure it and uh, get some data off of it. So him and two other guys jumped out of the boat and were literally, you know, wrestling this anaconda on the, uh, the shoreline of this river. Well, right now um, we're in the mammal collection and we're looking at some specimens, but hopefully uh, by next week uh, we'll be in the rainforest and I'll have some real live bass to show you. Video, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess in a way, I'm part of the story. How about, okay, how about we just get it something where you're saying, you know, like, so join me, or, uh, or maybe like the next time you see me, it'll be on Skype live from, from Guyana. Uh, okay. So come join me at the ROMS Curator Corner at 1 o'clock on Skype. That's perfect. <laughs> it's like an advertisement. <laughs> First try, a little bumpy. We'll go back in the opposite direction. Okay. All right, ready? Here we go. Let's just get the wheels turned. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna kick them so they're pointing the other direction. Just kick them around. Okay, go. So they're gonna be watching us. <laughs> Maybe. Hi there. Welcome to the ROM. Uh, my name's Josh. And uh, yeah. We're rolling. We're rolling. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Curator's Corner, Guyana. <laughs> Look at me. I can spread salt oh, everywhere. So uh, you want to like, hey Ross, let's get that sample out of the freezer, <laughs> and we'll, right. we'll. Yes. <laughs> where, where is it? <laughs>
Don't leave anything behind, Siley. We'll sell it. <laughs>